If you think the Charge Blade can do it all, you haven't seen anything yet. The Sword and Shield is hands down the most versatile and adaptive weapon in Monster Hunter World. Great for beginners in the way that it can do a variety of things out of the box, but absolutely deadly in the hands of an expert. It really is a weapon that allows for personal expression. Welcome to my tutorial on the Sword and Shield. Capcom labeled this weapon as a beginner's weapon, but what I think is that they were trying to say was less about the simplicity of using it and more about its versatility. You got a bunch of really fast attacks, you can dodge really fast, you can guard any other attack, you can use items when your weapon is out. Um, it's incredibly versatile, meaning that it's going to be very easy to pick up and have everything that you might want to do available to you. That being said, true mastery of this weapon definitely takes a lot of time and I think it's incredibly worth it as well because it is truly a rewarding weapon. Now I will say right up front there are a lot of different combo permutations that you can do between these attacks and I'm not going to show all of them because if the moves of the certain shield are its language then the way you put them together is how you express yourself so I really don't see any point in me trying to shove down certain combos down your throat but I will show off a few that a lot of people like traditionally for this weapon. Okay, like always, let's start with the draw attack, which is forward movement on your left stick and then the triangle button. Whew, and this nice advancing slash. Scene has great distance uh, it can cover and is pretty powerful as well. Now the cool thing is you can do this attack if you press the triangle and circle button together. It will do the exact same attack. So this is definitely your bread and butter for closing distances and getting in to start your combos. Okay, before we even get into the other moves, I really want to talk about this advancing slash because it is such an important move for the weapon. Um, for example, if you have a ledge here, you can do it going up to the ledge and you'll actually do a jumping rising slash. You can even follow it up with the triangle button to do an aerial attack. This of course does do mounting damage, so if you find a little elevation, do that and you could mount the monster. Now very strangely indeed, I'm not sure why they keep this in, but it's kind of a legacy thing, that if you walk up a ledge and press the circle button the moment you get up, you'll do the exact same move. Why they have that input, I really don't know. Um, but if you do find yourself accidentally walking up a ledge, go ahead and press the circle button and you can do that jumping slash as well. You can even do this move going off ledges and that will do the jumping advancing slash and you can follow that up with a triangle button. So again, very good things for uh, mounting monsters and just moving around the terrain very fast. Another amazing thing you can do is you know how weapons can slide down? Normally you can't slide down with your weapon out. You have to do it without your weapon. But if you advance and slash into the scene, you got it. You can slide down with your weapon out. And from there, there's several choices that you can do. Let's slide down and hold R to guard. Let's see, you're like, whoa! <laughs> and you want to guard on your way down, you can do that. Uh, of course, we can press the evade button to jump and then go into another jumping slash. And alternately, we can just press the triangle button to do the jumping rising slash again. And there is one final one. I'm afraid I can't show you the damage here, so I will go to a hunt to show you. But if you remember these little mushroom things, if you're holding the uh, run button, you can actually jump off of these things. Of course, you can do your jumping slash. But if you do that advanced slash into it, you'll go up it as well. And this will do the Helm Breaker. Now this uh, training room, unfortunately, this thing is too far away for me to hit it. Uh, but the Helm Breaker will do uh, attacks going all the way down inside of the monster, meaning a multitude of hits. Okay, now that we're done covering the advancing slash, let's go over all the different moves that the triangle button can do. From idle, if we press it, we'll just do a basic chop. Nothing to write hum about, just a standard quick attack. If we press it again, we'll do another attack here called the side slash. Just a nice one-two combo. And if we press it one more time, we'll do a finisher attack, sort of, uh, with the shield and the sword. That first hit, of course, with the shield doing some slight exhaust or stun damage to the monster if you hit it in the head. And we can end this whole combo with the triangle and circle button of all inputs to do the round slash. And of course, after any move, like any other weapon, you can evade really fast, allowing you to get in and out anytime you want. One neat thing to note here, though, is if you do the combo from the advanced slash, that triangle and circle, you will get an additional transition move here. Let's see this. The triangle called the short shield bash. So we can go ahead and link those together. 
Very nice. Okay, now let's check out the circle buttons, which as they've listed below is cut, they call the powerful combo. Um, basically, the triangle attacks are in generally more faster uh, and a little bit weaker, but the uh, circle buttons are a little bit more powerful. So let's do the first one here. Just a lateral slash. Press it one more time to do the return stroke. So this is just a nice one-two combo that keeps you in place. And we press it one more time and we do that round slash again. At any time we can mix this in with our triangle button combo. So if we want to do like one hit here and then go into our circle combo, we can do that. Or if we want to go like one, two, one, two, three, we can do that. Again, how you want to mix and match is really up to you and also just depending on how much of a window you have. With the circle button, we do have another type of combo, which is more focused on the shield, which is if you have forward input on and press circle, you'll do this shield attack. If we follow it up with the circle button again, we'll do this shield bash, which is definitely more powerful. And finally, we can press circle one more time to do the hard bash. This is a brand new move, and this combo actually does have good power to KO monsters. Um, so if you want to really focus, especially on smaller monsters like Puke Puke, you can go in there and just really just bash their faces in. And just like the other combos, you can end that with a round slash as well. Okay, now that we've learned that the triangle is very quick combos here with the sword and the circle button ones is a little bit slower and more powerful, and forward and circle is more of the shield bash combo, there's one other move which is brand new which might throw you off if you're new to this uh, and you come from past games, which is if you have any input in any direction after any attack and you press that and triangle, you'll do this new move called the Spiral Slash. This can be done in any direction, which means that you can attack in any direction you want. You're no more having to move around like you hit the monster, you have to go find their head and move, no. Now you just do that. And you can follow that up if you just saw with the triangle button to do a two hit sort of uh, transition combo, which is the Spiral Slash and Thrust. So that looks like, oosh. So definitely if you're in the middle of a combo and you do that spiral slash to turn around, go ahead and don't move and hit triangle one more time to do that really powerful quick thrust. It's a fabulous move that you could accidentally miss if you keep doing uh, different attacks like this. Okay, now that we know that the sword and shield can do an infinite combo in probably an infinite number of ways with these moves and this awesome spiral slash that we can now do, uh, which means we can sort of, as I like to say, stick on a monster like flies on poop. So this is the monster and it's moving around. We can really go ham on this thing and not have to worry about moving or doing anything else. There is one more final transition move which we'll talk about, which is this backwards hop. So after one of these attacks, you can hold back on the left stick and press the circle button and you'll do this little back step. So if you just let go, we'll see what happens, let go, you'll just run in and do this advancing slash. And if you press the triangle button, you go ahead and do that transition move if you remember from the advancing slash. Or we can press the circle button to go straight into that combo. Or we can even do spiral slashes as well. Instead of rushing forward, we can hold back on the left stick and press the triangle to stay in place here and do an attack and we could do a combo from there. I don't think you're gonna be using it that often, but it is a choice there if you want it. And finally, if we hold the circle button and charge it, we can do this awesome charge attack. Release here, boom, boom, and then we can follow it up with an aerial attack as well. See that one more time, charge up, release. Does that two hits? And then in the air, we have two choices. We can press the triangle button to do that aerial strike. This is especially good if you want to mount a monster, or if you know the monsters are not moving and you just want to do a lot of big damage, you can press the circle button. And that does this awesome falling bash. You can change your direction in the air when you're doing the falling bash, so make sure that you aim towards the monster. Say that one more time. And from there, we can follow up our combos and do stuff as well. So very fun. 
Now, of course, one of the most disgusting things you can do is spam that uh, jumping back move. For example, if we do this and we jump back, um, right after the shield bash, you can actually jump back one more time. And you can just spam this to, to all get out. Of course, outside all these really cool combos and fast hits is the ability to guard. So just hold R2 and you can do a guard. You can even move a little bit. Now, of course, this is not a land, so you're not going to be able to take moves like Nier Gigante's Dive and walk away with most of your health. Um, and it does have knockback and takes out a lot of your stamina. Um, but it is there for in case emergencies like, let's say, Anjanath or a Rathian is breathing fire in your face. And you don't know where to go, just hold R2 and you can generally walk away with your life still intact. There are actually two other moves you can do while you're guarding. I apologize, this is a punch and edit, so it's Xbox on the screen. But as you're holding guard, press the circle button and you can do this guard slash. It's just a very nice, safe little slash you can do. Really great if you've got barrel bombs and you want to explode them without sort of like getting yourself exploded. You can do this instead. The other thing you can do is press the triangles button while you're guarding to do this upward swing. This rising slash is actually really good. It reaches really high and it can start the combo of the triangle button ones. So it does give you another way to start the combo with getting an extra move without having to move forward too much. One of the popular combos because people don't want to use their shield sometimes, they just want to cut off tails, is to do this rising slash and then triangle, triangle, circle, 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 or triangle, 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 circle, circle, circle. That allows you to avoid that final triangle attack in which you do a dual sort of shield sword combo. You can even shorten this up even tighter like this to do quite a lot of bit of damage and hits without moving forward in a very short span of time. Yeah, so it's just a rising chop, triangle, circle, circle. Very fun. Another cool thing that this weapon could do is use the slinger when your weapon is out. So just hold L2 and then press R2 in order to fire your slinger. So let's say we're over here, we're fighting, we see the barrel. Oh my gosh, I want to hit him. Boom, we can do that all without taking our weapon away, which is really cool. The area where this really shines is stuff like flashbangs. If you've got your weapon out, you're attacking, and the like Rathalos jumps in the air, you can immediately throw the flashbang and knock it out without ever having to put your weapon away. So that pretty much covers all the different attacks. Now, I know there's going to be a few that I miss. This weapon has all sorts of little weird uh, quirks to it. For example, if you do that sort of, uh, you know, back hop and let go, that forward attack, this advancing slash, if you do it up a ledge, it'll actually uh, send you up it. Stuff like that. <laughs> uh, so all sorts of little fun little uh, tricks and things that you can do with this weapon, and I'm sure I'm not able to cover it all. So let me know down in comments below if I missed anything, uh, especially anything important. Okay, now let's go check this weapon out in combat. Okay, now time to head into the arena against Arathalos so I can show you how all these things come together. One quick note I want to do is about status weapons. So right now I am wielding a weapon with paralysis. Um, the way status works in this game is every time you hit a monster you have a 1 in 3 chance of inflicting status damage. Once you do enough status damage to a monster depending on their threshold for that particular status, you'll inflict it. So if you do enough paralysis damage to Arathalos, he'll become paralyzed. Each time you do it, they do get stronger uh, thresholds, so it's going to become harder and harder to do it. Um, but for a weapon like this, or the Dual Blades, which hits really fast, um, you're able to apply statuses much faster than any other weapon. And because you can attack with such precision and speed, being able to really punish monsters in their weak spots with elements that they are weak to will really add up over time and definitely rival even damage of that of like the Greatsword. Again, this is a weapon where you're hitting fast and often, so if you're hitting the wrong parts of a monster, it could easily take you double the time than attacking the right spot. And now that they've added in the ability to see the damage, I think that's becoming much more easier to know where and where not to attack. One thing I definitely like to do, again, because I was talking about you can use your uh, slinger with your weapon out, is to have flash pods on me at all time. It's very easy if you just cultivate thunderbugs. And I think you'll see here, it's just really fun how you can sort of tie in the moves for this weapon because it really is freestyle. There's so many different things you can do. Um, there's no right answer. Start out here with a mount. You can see with that spiral slash, we're able to attack so often. Okay, here we got the paralysis. Let's take this tail off. That felt good. Let's show off that helm dash. <laughs> it 
that the Helm Slash does an incredible amount of mounting damage and it just hits all the way through the monster. So the higher up you're on on the monster, the more hits and damage it'll do. Now you do run out of sharpness very fast with a weapon like this, so you definitely want to keep a mind of that and use whetstones a lot. Actually, let's KO him, shall we? So I KO'd uh, Rathalos. Let's see if we can get him to go in the air, and I can show you how good it is to be able to flash pod on demand. There we go. Really just so good at going in there and punishing, tripping monsters because you can hit so low and so calculated on those legs. Uh, it's gonna fly in the air. Let's flash bottom. Woohoo! <laughs> and here he is, paralyzed yet again. <laughs> this weapon really is just amazing. Let's see if I could show you that shield bash to the face uh, if you win the mount. There we go. Oh, that's so good. Let's see if we can get another KO, maybe, actually. Now, Rathalos is quite exhausted because he's been taking so many shield hits to the face. He just does not know what to do. Uh, nice fire there, boy. Another KO? Let's finish him off. There we go. Again, just really great. We can get in there, we can attack, we can move out really fast, we can use items on demand to drop the monster, we can do mounts, we can do everything. Uh, it really is a versatile weapon and a jack of all trades. Bonus advice before we leave, if you're going to use flash bombs on Kushala, do not do it when it's in its tornado like this. That is the wrong thing to do because no one is going to be able to touch this monster because it's still engulfed in a tornado and that can knock people off or even kill them. What you want to do is once you see it fly up in the air, you want to stop, wait a second, wait until it gets outside of its tornado, and then hit it with a flash pod. That is the right way. So we're going to wait. Wait for it. Okay, now it's out of the tornado. We can hit it, and boom, people can now get their damage. Let's see this one more time just to make sure we can drive this point home, because many people don't get it. It's in the tornado. Wait for it. Do not hit it. Especially don't do it if someone's mounted, please. Uh, it's Let them finish the mount. Anyway, we'll save some of this stuff for a future video. Let me know down in the comments below if I missed anything. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy hunting.